Welcome everyone. My name is Stephanie Ivick. I'm the Content Marketing Manager here at ELB Learning. Today we are discussing the differences between LMS and LXP and which platform might be best for your needs. Before I introduce our speaker, I have just a few housekeeping items that I'll go over with you. This session is being recorded. We'll email a link to the recording afterwards to everyone. You can keep an eye on your inbox for that. Closed captions are also enabled for this webinar. You can show or hide them using the captions button in your toolbar, usually at the bottom of the Zoom window. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to use the Q&A panel as you need it. We'll be watching that. We'll do our best to answer all of them in the time we have. If we run out of time, we'll follow up with you offline afterwards to get you those answers. You can also live chat with other attendees. Say hello, tell us where you're tuning in from, share your thoughts as the webinar goes on. Dominic has some polls planned, so we'll be using that as well. And if you have any additional thoughts that aren't the answers that we've preset in the polls, you can put those in the chat. So joining me today, we have Dominic Gloya. He's a customer success manager and an LMS expert. And without further ado, Dom, I will let you take over. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm very happy to, to be a part of everybody's day, and you should be seeing my screen right now. This is going to be an interesting topic. The agenda for today is as such. We're going to start off with a quick poll because I always like to understand who I'm meeting with and what your interests are to help me customize what I'm going to be presenting. It's not all pre-scripted and memorized. We're going to start off with a discussion about which you came here to hear about the platform selection criteria. I've made a couple of worksheet, worksheets that you might find helpful. And notice that from the agenda, I put the Q&A before the live demo. Uh, I'm anticipating we're not going to need the full hour to get through the information. I'm going to move into a Q&A session. I want to find out what you're interested in seeing. I'll switch over to our learning experience platform and actually show you how some of the stuff works and what it looks like from the learner's point of view. So that'll be where you interact with me and tell me what you want to see. Let's start off with a poll so I can get to know a little bit about you. So if you could bring that up, Stephanie. All right, everyone, you should see that poll has just popped up kind of in the center of your screen. It looks like everybody's found it. And we are getting some answers in right now. So far, it is pretty spread out across the three different options. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, Thanks. we have about 76, 80% of our participants have responded. So I'll leave it there for a couple more seconds. And then, you know, you snooze, you lose. You don't get to submit your answer to the poll. No, no, no one's going to lose today. Everyone's going to walk away a winner. <laughs> We're all winners. Yes. <laughs> all right. I am going to share those results so that everyone can see them. So it's it's pretty evenly split. Oh, actually. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's good for me to know because as I go through the presentation today, I'll keep that in mind and, and make comments. So let's go on to the next poll question. Do you need to improve employee performance? All right, so there we go. That's a simple yay or nay. All right, we've got some rapid responses coming in. I think, I don't think anyone will be surprised by the split here, but I'll give everyone a couple more seconds if they want to share their response. All right, we'll go ahead and close this poll and share those results there. Oh, wow. We actually had some people say no to that. Okay, 19%. Okay, five people said they don't need to improve employee performance. Very interesting. Okay, let's go on to the third question. All right, there we go. Oh, wait, I didn't launch it. Now there's your poll. While people are answering this question, those who answered no to that previous question that they don't need to improve employee performance, perhaps you could drop in what type of training you do do. 
it might be just educational, like high school, elementary school, college level, where it's not so much performance based, but you know, it might be, it might be skill based or just knowledge based, which is perfectly valid, perfectly fine. Or perhaps they've already cracked the code and they should share their secrets. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring them on in a joint webinar. <laughs> All right, I'll give everyone a couple more seconds. Looks like we still got some answers coming in. And then I will share these last poll results. All right, let's end this poll. And there are the results. Okay, so a, a little skew to uh, next year or no need, uh, but it's, but some also are interested in possibly doing something on the short term. Thank you very much for responding to those polls. And now let me address these poll questions for you. What is the size of the LED, L and D team? What does that have to do with selecting uh, a learning platform? And surprisingly, the size of your team does impact that decision. Uh, I did see in the poll that some people are on teams of one person. So when selecting a learning platform, you don't want to have something that is super, super complicated and it's going to take two or three people to manage if you're a one person team. So the size of your team and the skill sets in your team are definitely so something to be considered when selecting a platform. Do you need to improve employee performance? Now, why did I ask that question? Because there are a lot of different tools available now geared towards that, to improving and tracking and getting feedback and on your employee performance. So if that is a concern, you want to be aware when selecting a learning platform. And then the last one you need it, that's just to find out uh, you know, how urgent the need is from the group today. So with that, let's proceed. Now, the title of this, comparing an LMS to an LXP, in preparing for today, I feel, well, let me pull up a couple of learning management systems so I could talk about them. And it's like, you know, things have changed. In order to remain competitive, learning management systems had to start offering more features. Typically, from what you're seeing right here, a learning management system mostly was geared around hosting and delivering content, meaning you could upload your training, it would reside on the learning management system. And when you added learners, which was the second, the second bullet point there, you could add your learners, they would then have access anytime, any place, they would have access to that learning content. And then you as an admin can log in and generate some reports. Now, the information you typically get from our learning management system is very minimal. Uh, the typical platform uh, for a learning management system is to upload a SCORM file. And the SCORM protocol, the, SCO the SCORM parameters typically will track the user's name so you log on to alert to the LMS. The LMS knows you're Bob or Mary, and you take the course. The SCORM course will then determine if you passed or failed, depending upon the percentage the designer put in. Is 75% passing, is 80% passing? And then of course, the actual numerical score, 90%, 100%. So that information is supplied to the learning management system. And when you report, you find out from Bob and Mary that they passed and what their score was. Uh, as things evolved, the platforms that became more powerful and we call them learning experience platforms. And you can see here, the list of features is a lot more extensive. Basically, the focus is not so much on did the learner, who the learner was, did they pass and what the score is, but is now the, the learning experience platform does more than that and starts concerning itself with experiences. It's learner focus, providing hybrid learning paths. Hybrid learning meaning a combination of asynchronous learning, a combination of virtual meetings like web webinar conferencing, 
a combination of in-person meeting. So it's actually a blended learning of in-person or virtual meetings and the asynchronous. Multilingual features, social learning, gamification, all these are uh, now possible in these learning platforms. So really now when you look up and do a search for an LMS, I'm finding they're not the LMS of old. They're pretty much what we, what we would call today a learning experience platform, and they've had to do that in order to remain competitive. The old-fashioned LMS would want something that was so limited when there's so many other capabilities available. So since we're talking about learning platforms, whether you want to call them an LMS or an LXP, it doesn't make any difference to me. They're pretty much synonymous right now. But with so many different features, how do you decide which one is best for you? What I put on the top of the list is integration. Not everyone, but some people need to have their learning platform be tightly integrated with something else the already the company's already using. Why? If I've got an HR system and all my employees are actively involved in that HR system or a Salesforce system every single day, it's part of their job. Wouldn't it be nice? if they could take learning in, in that same platform. So some companies, their top requirement is, I need tight integration with, we, what, with what we already have. In other situations, the integration does not have to be so tight. Ah, I'll send them to the LMS or the LXP, uh, but I don't want them to have to log in again. So there's something called single sign-on. If you're signed in to the company intranet, or if you're signed in to the HR system, and we ask you to take some training, they'll know right away who you are, that you're an employee of the company, and you can take your assigned training. So there's two levels of integration right there. And very often, that could be a make or break decision when you're looking for a platform. The next item is, what are your goals? And this is something that may need a little discussion. And I put down long-term, short-term, and I put the long-term first. Why? Because for me personally, that's more important. If I see myself in five years being someplace in the learning development field, and I purchase a platform that's only going to get me to second base, and I'm never going to go full round and hit a home run, um, why? Why make that investment only to pr only, uh, an investment into something that's going to limit me from getting to home base? Okay, so knowing what your long term goals are should have an impact on what you purchase today. Short term goals also definitely something to consider. Do I need to be up and running in three months? Do I need to be able to manage this with one person? Eventually, I'll have a larger team. But if I'm a one-person a one shop, you know, is this something I can handle on my own? So both of these are valid to consider when making a decision as to what platform to use. Next, the size of the L&D team. That was one of the poll questions. Again, if I'm a one-person shop, can I handle this management system? this LXP platform by myself. I should have asked another question. Maybe you could drop it into the chat. How many people are freelancers where you're a consultant and you pick up jobs for multiple companies? Imagine if you had a learning platform where you could store the training courses and the students from multiple small companies. So instead of each, for a small company, may not have an L&D team. Uh, they don't have the uh, L&D skill sets that you have. Imagine having one platform that you could customize, one platform that you could customize with different companies when you're managing the content. Very interesting concept, a nice money-making idea for the freelancers there. So the size of the team and the skill sets of the team. So now let's talk about the skill sets. So let's say you have four or five people on your team and one person is very detail oriented, 
very analytical, very well organized. They could stay on top of putting out fires as soon as they come up, uh, getting course design, things like that. You have one person that's really good at managing the LMS. Good to know. All right. Uh, other members of your team, you may have someone that's really good at uh, creating high-end interactivities and sharing those out. Someone else is really good at writing the copy and putting in voiceovers and things like that. So you may have a distributed team where individually each person has, has different skills and synergistically together, they can create quite powerful results. If that's your situation, that's something to consider when selecting a learning platform. If, if you pick something high end that's complicated to use, not a problem if you've got one person that you could dedicate to that skill. Support. Support is important because if regardless of the size of your team, initiating and learning and managing a learning platform comes with varying levels of change, of learning, of responsibility. Regardless of the size of your team, having a support team to get you started and getting you and getting you launched. Having a support team that's going to understand, hmm, uh, I need to know the size of your team, the skills of your team, what your goals are, long-term and short-term, the way I support someone in, with a learning management platform is I need to understand all of the above checklist items. And so I could customize support to the individual and get them launched in the shortest amount of time and give them a firm foundation so they can grow. So support is very, very important to consider as well. Next item is what are the benefits that I'm going to get from this particular platform. Interesting thing to consider. It's nice to see that a vendor is promising you everything under the sun, but what's the quality of each of those benefits, of each of those features, and what benefit is my company personally going to, uh, to receive you know, from this particular platform? And that's important to understand before we get to the next part. You know, way down the bottom of the list is money. Okay, very often companies say we could spend X number of dollars for a platform, and then they start looking. That's the wrong place to start. It should be the last thing to consider. I mean, it is important. We can't we can't escape the money issue, but it's not the place to start because if you start with money. You're limiting yourself. I'm only, I'm only going to look at something that's in this price range. And you may not even know out, what's out there that's available. So, for example, I'm going to enter an automobile race. And I decide to start with my budget. I've got $40,000 to spend on a car. And I'm going to enter this race. And I, I want to win. There's a big fat prize and there's publicity and there's touring the, around the country. I really want to win this. And I take out, I take my $40,000 and I go shopping. I buy the fastest car I can find. Doing it that way, I'm going to enter the race with a $40,000 race car. However, if I look for the most, the, the fastest car possible, and I see one that's $500,000, as much as I would love that baby, there's no way I could afford that. But what if I found something at 75,000? It was much faster than the $40,000 car. May not be as fast as, as the $500,000 car, but you know, you know, now that I know that that's available, and if I can negotiate some payment terms, I just got a better chance. I've increased my chances of winning or showing in the, you know, in the money. Uh, by shopping quality first and then seeing where the value returned. Or let's take, take another look at it. Let's say I did see that $500,000 car and I go, wow, guaranteed winner, but I can't afford it. And I'm talking to the salesperson and the salesperson says, tell you what, you know, put a down payment of the $40,000 you have, drive up the lot, you know, so you could enter this race. 
paint our racing car all over with our logo and stuff like that, give us the testimonial, and then either return the car or pay, you know, or, or, or keep the car and, and make the rest of the payments. It's like, whoa, it's like unbelievable. I can actually drive this off with $40,000 and actually bring in such a return on an investment that I'm ahead of the game. But we'll get back to that later on if you want to talk about that. Oh, and before I go on to the next slide, Swiss Army Knife. As you're shopping around, you're going to find vendors that say, we've got everything. We've got the gamification. We've got uh, you know, video feedback. And we've got the score-based courses and the personalized learning paths. We've got AI, everything under the sun. I'm not saying to be aware, to be beware of, of vendors like that. But what I am saying is, look intelligently at these offers. It's literally impossible to pack into a Swiss army knife, that nice 12, 14 inch chef's blade and that nice bread knife, with the serrated edges. I mean, you're gonna get the knife and you're gonna get the bottle opener. It's, you, you, so you're gonna get the individual components, but none of them are gonna be top of class, none of them. So when you think about your long-term goals, is a Swiss army knife going to be sufficient? But then again, so I, want, I, want, I don't want to be biased here. Then again, if you look at your short-term goals, you may say, Dom, I know they're not the best, but for our needs right now, this is the best fit for us. So a Swiss army knife may be the solution for you, or it may not. Just be aware that just because they promise everything under the sun, that doesn't mean you're going to be getting everything under the sun. And we, I can answer questions about that as they come up. So here's a worksheet that I made up. It's a sample worksheet. You can create something like this on your own in Excel. I did this in Word, so I want it to look nice for the PowerPoint. But this is something that you could customize for yourself. And basically, at the top, it has the name of the platform that you're considering. So I put our Rockstar Learning Platform right in here. And then the items we just discussed are in the left-hand column. So the way it would work is if integration is important, then you would put the name of what you need the platform to integrate with. And, or if it's not important, you would just leave this blank. And then you would say, okay, the first thing I want to find out is, does this platform integrate with Salesforce? And I put down a yes over here. Goals, short-term and long-term. I put some examples of what these short-term and long-term goals are. And the legend on the bottom shows that if it doesn't meet that requirement, you put down a one, uh, a one. If it meets it partially somewhat, you put down a two. And if it does a really good job at meeting that requirement, you put down a three, just so you can have some sort of a ranking and compare multiple platforms. So if I did this with two different platforms and I got a bunch of threes here and a bunch of two, ones and twos there, I know this is the better choice. Okay, and when it comes to the team structure, I put down, for example, if I got three people on my team and one is really advanced, okay, how would, how would my team fit with this particular platform? Uh, support, do I get a dedicated person? Do I have 24-7 emails? Is there a knowledge base? And I, I break that. The next items, the benefit, I'm just putting sample dollar signs in, but basically when you're considering the benefit the learning platform is going to bring you. If I use this platform, where am I going to save money? Is it employee hours that I'm, that I'm going to be saved? Is it going to be, am I saving time on actually creating the learning content? Am I saving time on actually managing the whole learning system because one platform is easier than the other? Think about you know, how much your company is going to save. And then think about how much your company is going to increase their revenues by. If I could do a so-so job, just use that Swiss Army knife you know, deal and just do an okay sales training job, you know, my sales may go up a little bit, okay? But if I had the high-powered tools and I could really coach each person so each one maximizes their, their capabilities and they have and they don't make any mistakes in front of the customers, they make them all when the, during the training process, whoa, how much more effective we can be. And if I could train these people in three months and get them out as an effective salespeople 
instead of training people in two weeks and then not doing that good of, you know, of training, how much extra revenue can I make by providing good training? Think about that. And then project uh, how much if I'm decreasing costs and I'm increasing sales and I see the cost of the platform, typically the first year for setting it up may be a little bit extra, but let's take a look at my annual cost. It may be that I'm actually, if you really hit on a nice sweet spot, you could actually be saving and money and increasing uh, revenues to the point where the net net is going to be the platform's not going to cost you anything because you're going to increase revenues more than the cost of the platform. Uh, so then after you calculate that, what's my is it does it fit my budget? And I put adjusted budget because it'd be like, you know, originally I thought I had 10,000 to spend, but I found this nice sweet spot where I could, I could generate so much revenue and save so many, so much in expenses that it's worth me spending, uh, you know, 15,000 instead of the 10,000. So I, I'm going to adjust my budget accordingly and come up with a yes. So any questions on this worksheet before we proceed? I'm not seeing any questions yet. Um, everyone, then, uh, if you do have questions, you can pop those in the chat or the Q&A panel. I have another workshop, worksheet coming up, so let's proceed. I grabbed this screenshot from, and there's my source down the bottom. It's the e-learning industry. I found this, and I thought this was interesting because they're talking about you know, modern learning. And this is showing the... A percentage of different features that are that the modern learner is is using or demanding. So, eighty percent of modern learners are learning from doing web web based searches. Seventy seven percent are learning from collaboration. Um, Job based and checklist sixty four percent. So you can see that some of these things have higher percentages, uh, but. All of these items have been put on this pie chart because they've all got high percentage rates of, and this is the way, these are different ways modern learners use. Got videos and podcasts up here as well, online performance support. And then what I did is I did an overlay of what type of things we can look at in a learning platform that correlates to these ways that modern learners are using. So for a web-based search, I put down personalized learning paths because in a web-based search, you're like, sort of like giving it the input and getting the results. And it's, it's, depending upon what you're searching for, your results are going to be different. Sort of like a chat GPT prompt, the more detailed and more specific you are, the, it modifies the results that you get back. Uh, chat and uploads, uh, th you know, that relates to people learning from, from collaboration. Uh, uh, manager support, I put down these video coaching tools that actually provide that in an excellent format, and so on and so forth. So from this, from looking at the way people, modern learners are learning, and associating that with different features that you might find in a learning platform, you come to my next worksheet. And I call this my value add worksheet. And again, we start with the name of the platform you're looking at. And then different features. This is by no means an exhaustive list. You could, I could have come up with twice as many items here with very little effort, but then again, it wouldn't fit on the slide. And this is something that it's not fixed in stone. It's something you could develop on your own. But basically, put a list of the features that different vendors are saying that they have, and then take a look at the quality of those features. So looking at the Rockstar Learning Platform, I didn't want to be like, oh yeah, we do everything great, 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 and put, and put everything down with threes. So I, I also put down some things that we don't give top notch in, and like AI recommendations. We really don't have that feature in the Rockstar Learning Platform. And integrated web conferencing, 
we do have that to a limited degree, but some platforms actually have the like the Zoom or the GoTo meeting right inside the LMS. We don't have that. So let's let's be honest. You know, no one platform is going to be perfect in everything. But the way you would use a worksheet like this is look at the features that you're considering. Look at how effective one platform. So we have, let's say, SCORM and a bunch of other file types, very high rating with the Rockstar Learning Platform. You may compare that with another vendor and compare them side by side. Do they do they match up both as threes or are the numbers going to be different? But then we take it one step further, not just comparing the features and how each platform delivers those features, but we put down what value it brings. So for example, the ability to upload a whole bunch of different file types may be really strong in one platform and it brings in a certain amount of value. But the ability to repurpose existing content like PDFs and videos that I already have and reuse those and turn them into e-learning very easily, that could be like, whoa. I go, not every platform does that. And if I could find a platform that I could reuse my existing content, that would be very, very, very valuable to me. If that's the case, you put a bigger number here, all right? So the combination of how good is the tool and the combination of how much value it brings, this is what you want to sum up, okay? And that's a good way of comparing one platform to another platform. Shall I continue? Stephanie? Yes, let's keep going. All right. Now I threw this in because we're talking a lot about learning experience. It may be kind of new to a lot of people here because if you're an instructional designer, it's like, well, what, this, what, is it, what is a learning experience designer? A learning experience designer, learning experience platform, we're kind of like talking about the two things that are very similar. And I snagged this screenshot from a uh, McGill website. The, you know, the URL is right here. And I made an overlay on this to simplify it so I'm not reading it word for word. But the difference between a learning experience designer and the actual subject matter experts, the instructors, is whereas the instructor provides the content the learning experience designer actually designs how that content is going to be. The learning experience designer will actually be involved in how, how am I going to organize and deliver the content. And these things directly relate to your choice of a platform because the platform is going to deliver the content. The platform, in the platform, you're going to organize the content. In the, some platforms let you dis actually design and create content in the platform. So you can see if you take a learning experience point of view, this is what you're going to be looking at. You're going to be looking at the technology and the tools. I mentioned the Swiss Army knife that has a lot of different technologies and a lot of different tools wrapped in. And some are kind of like a la carte where you piece together the tools and the technologies that you want. And then we have the assessment methods. I mean, obviously there's gotta be some level of assessing the employees, uh, the performance. And we, we've gone a lot further than just a pass fail and a numerical score. So the feedback and that we can get now is a lot more sophisticated and the learning experience designer. And if you're an instructional designer, guess what? Nowadays, you're also a learning experience designer. Unless you limit yourself just to uploading a PowerPoint and clicking the next button, uh, instructional design has evolved way beyond just point and click. So you really, you're gonna be getting your heads into a lot of situations where you're actually gonna start thinking a lot more like a learning experience designer. So uh, how you're going to create the assessments, what methods you're going to use, uh, that'll provide the feedback for your uh, team to evaluate and assess the learners. Design engaging learning activities. There are different tools for that. 
some are built into the Swiss Army Knife uh, format, and some are a la carte. And, and that's used to actually engage your learners into different interactivities. So now our time, let me take a look at the time here. It is good. We have plenty of time left, which is, which is the way I designed this. So on this slide, I'm gonna open it up to questions. If you have no questions, that's okay. Cause I have plenty of, I have a lot more to show you. Uh, this is gonna lead into the hands-on portion where I could actually show you some things that I've been talking about. But before we actually get to the questions, there's a link right here. You can snag a shot of that if you want to, a screenshot, but here's a link you go to for our white paper, LMS versus LXP. Uh, here's my link if you wanna set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. I'm not a salesperson, but I'd be glad to discuss your needs with you, point you in the right direction, help you strategize and things like that. Or you can email me directly with individual questions. And on the right here, there's another ebook. And this one has to do with learning technologies, are proving better outcomes. Okay, so a couple of a couple of ebooks I think you might be interested in, and how to contact me. We could come back to the screen, but before I show you anything else, are there any questions? All right, we do have one, a couple of questions actually. So you talked a little bit about you know, finding an LMS that's easy to use, one that fits with the skill levels of your team, but then you also mentioned support as being one of the criteria that you use when you're considering a platform. If the LMS is easy to use, do you still, does it matter if the provider has support for you? <laughs> that is a good question. I was talking to a client earlier this week and I just couldn't believe what he said. Not naming any names, but he did not know if the application could be privately branded for his company. And it's like, uh, yeah. And a couple of clicks, I showed him exactly how it could be done. He goes, oh my gosh, my boss is going to love this. It's like, how did you not know that? The support comes in in different is important for different reasons. Number one, in initial onboarding. If uh, you have a good support team, a, the onboarding process is going to understand the skill level of, of your team. It's actually going to present information in a clear cut logical fashion. Uh, what I, li I like to consider it like building on a firm foundation. I can breeze through onboarding and a snap. Uh, here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. Boom, 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 boom. I could, I could speak right over your head and say, done, you're onboarded. I showed you how you do everything. Good luck. You're on your own. Okay. Uh, I've been an instructor for many, many, many years. I've been live uh, in the classroom instruction on a corporate level. I can tell when people's eyes are glazing over. I can tell when someone is bored and I got to pick up the pace. So a good support team is going to customize the initial onboarding. A good support team is going to be there to, you know, if you ever run into a problem. And a good support team is going to be there as the platform evolves and new features comes up to make sure it's like, hey, heads up. Do you know we've got this new social learning feature where chat and chat and discussion groups can be integrated into the platform? We just released it. Uh, so it's good to have a good team by your side. Uh, anything else before we go on to some demos? Uh, let's see, we had one question about whether or not the ebooks are free, which they are, and I have posted those direct links in the chat mm -hmm. for everybody. And um, yes. You might as well post it. my links in the chat too while you're at it. <laughs> yes, I did to schedule a meeting with Dominic. That's in there too. And it is also free to schedule a meeting with Dominic. Why don't you uh, go ahead and show us this demo now? Okay. I can do that. So let's take, so this is the Rockstar Learning Platform. It's a learning experience platform. This is from the user's point of view. I'm gonna go over this very, very quickly, but I want you to stop me, drop into the chat. Let Stephanie know, whoa, 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 he's going too fast. I wanna know more about that. 
let me know if that is if that's the case. But I'm looking at as a from a student, I'm looking at what I have to take. My manager told me I got to take these courses. I could do some browsing around and and take stuff that this is available to me. I don't have to take it. But if it's something like the cybersecurity, I can take that. Uh, here's stuff I could curate my own learning and save stuff that I want to come back to. I can create folders and then share it with my colleagues, a nice little social learning. If there's any uh, events coming up, okay, let me show. I, I can just uh, go to the, I don't seem to have any available right now, but I could see uh, live and virtual events and channels. This is really cool. Okay, if I click here, the admin posted this video and then all these are responses from the employees. So as an employee, and this is what makes this a learning experience platform as opposed to a learning management system. I, as a learner, can now engage with the learning content in a lot of different ways. I can now click the contribute button and I come up with a template where I put in my own text. I come over here, I could click on, I'll just pick a picture at uh, random. Okay, voila, I am now a student and I could compose a page that includes uh, text, images, videos. I could even you know, throw in some questions and I could publish it. And when I do, let me cancel that. When I do, my post would be right here. So imagine having a cohort of learners where they're all sharing their best practices, how to overcome a sales objection and so on and so forth. You have learners learning from learners and of course, the admin has full control of either boosting or, or deleting any content that's posted here. Nice, cool little social learning feature. Here's one. I don't know if anyone has any interest in multilingual, but this is an interesting page. It's in, obviously, you know what language that is. I'm gonna click play here for a couple of seconds. Welcome to Language Line Conversations. And I'm We're hoping you can Rich hear Bass, that. Vice President of Customer Success. And I'm hoping you can hear that because I'm going to come up here, click on this little globe, and with a name like Dominic Caloia, you got to figure I'm Italian heritage. So I'll select Italian. And look at this. The AI has translated the page into Italian. Ah, but look at this. It actually put Italian subtitles into the video. How awesome is that? I'm going to click, click play. Il successo dei clienti per i fratelli di apprendimento. Il censimento recente. And I hope you heard that because now the audio has been translated also. The first time I saw this is like, this is super, super amazing. It's like it actually translated the audio in the video. How cool is that? And I can... Yeah, it was one where simple, where simple Chinese, meaning if one of your needs is to train a multilingual audience, this could be something that is now gets elevated to a high priority and a high return on value. Remember that value add work, worksheet? You know, so one platform may offer this feature. And you say, whoa, I, this is very important to me. You put a lot of dollar signs next to that. Another platform may not offer this feature. So then I could get all that, you're not going to get all that value. And that's how you compare the different platforms. But I've got more to show you here. This, is a, this page was created inside the Rockstar Learning Platform. So this is the built-in authoring tool. It's not the authoring tool that is super powerful. It, it's a freebie that's built into the platform. And it's fast and easy to use and has some advantages. The translate feature, the audio translate feature, big advantages to authoring in this platform. What I have here is another perk with the Rockstar Learning Platform. I've taken this page I created and I've added some questions to this. I've already answered the questions. I see which ones I got right. When I run a report on this particular item, I'm gonna get these answers so as an admin, I know 
that uh, like my manager knows that Dominic paid attention to this because he got all the answers correct. So this is very valuable for assessing and confirming that the work you've done, people, are, the employees are using it and they're learning from it. Great to show to stakeholders. We did all the, the L&D team did all this effort putting this together. You as a company spent all this money on, on giving us these tools and look, it's working. So this is very, very powerful. Hey, Dominic, quick yes. question uh, mm -hmm. from the audience about the translations. Mm -hmm. How can how do we know that the translations are right? How confident are we in that? Can we trust the translations? That's a question that is valid whenever the AI translation is being used. And in all honesty, there's about 74 different languages that's available for translation. Not all of them do the closed captioning and the video, the audio and the video. Not all of them do that. Um, but the more common basic languages like the Spanish, Italian, French, the German, they're going to be more reliable. When you start getting to things like the Norwegian languages, not too, the AI is not too good with that. Uh, and because I, we've tested it out with some clients. Uh, you, know, you know, you know, some of the more arcane, uh, uncommon languages, AI is not 100% up to snuff with. So it, dep it depends upon what languages you need. And what I'm thinking is, let's test it out. You know, see, you know, and the only way to test it out is actually have it do some translations and have someone read it in that language to see if, if it's uh, acceptable or not. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want to show you here is let's take a look at this course. And yeah, this course has a couple of interesting things in it. So here I've uploaded a video people in the and I can play this video. It's a normal video. These circles right here, these overlays are added by the platform, Rockstar Learning Platform. So no, pro, no programming has been required to put these in. One of the things that I've added, again, are these questions. So uploading a video is great for learning. We saw in the modern learner that a lot of people learn from watching videos and podcasts. But let me ask you a question. Uh, just about any learning platform will let you upload a video. So here's the question. Are you, up, you upload a video, are your learners watching it? Now, maybe the, that's one of the questions to ask the platform. Will it let me know if someone's watched the video? And the answer could be yes, could be no. If they watched it, did they learn from it? I mean, how do you know that? And most platforms are not going to have a way of telling you if a learner actually, I mean, I hit the play button. I could be texting on my phone. I could be talking to somebody else. I could be eating my lunch at, while I'm doing this, not paying any attention. It reaches the end. It marks complete. I go on to the next, but I've learned nothing. Or I've missed, I've missed half of the content. By putting questions here and running the report, you're going to find out if Dominic actually paid attention. I mean, here, what will you use? It's a fill in the blank. If I haven't watched this, I have no idea what to, you know, what to type in. And there's more. So this, uh, th these types of questions, I could add them to a PDF. I could add them to a page or author into the system like I showed you before. I could add them to a video like you're seeing now. But then there's something else. I've got show commentary. As I play the video, the, the example I like watch over here on the right hand side. Here in Chicago, at certain points in the video, a comment is going to pop up. So I'll just keep talking over the video. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video. So at 26 seconds into the video, it comes up. I rehearsed. I rehearsed for the improv show. Okay, go with it. Like, what what do these things mean? You have the ability in the Rockstar Learning Platform to add what we call video commentaries at any place that you want. You could add questions. You could add important items here. So let's say I was I was multitasking and I missed something. I click show all comments. I'm going to click on the time code for 45 seconds. 
it jumps to that part. That practice, rehearsal, being ready is one of the biggest things missing in corporate America. And she's talking about practices often missing in, in corporate America. So between these two items, between the questions and an easy way to get to the answers, get, and no video editing required. Okay, I could turn a video and repurpose an existing video into a highly engaging, interactive learning experience. Remember, we're on a learning experience platform. I could turn a simple video that I've already done without having to do any video editing into a highly interactive, engaging learning experience where as an administrator, I can track the results and the show to my boss that all the work that I did in creating this is actually producing results because employees are getting 100%. They should, because all you have to do is talk to me once and tell me you're checking the results, you're showing it to the CEO of the company. Okay, I really need to pay a little more attention and I'm gonna do that, okay? Because I don't wanna lose my job, <laughs> all right? Oh, and then I, should, I had it in the same course, but here's a course I built out for a client. It's 10 weeks long each week. When a new week comes along, this ne the, the next the week becomes available. There's some learning content in it, but then there's also a chat group. So I could type in hi from the webinar. All right. So if, if another employee, my, my colleague was logged in at the same time, we could have real-time chat to discuss the learning content. But if I scroll up, it works like a discussion group. So I could see here, Carleen is asking Veronica a question. All right. And so here, you know, there's a conversation with, uh, you know, with his Erin, she's, she's typing in. So uh, a subject matter expert or a manager can pop in periodically and answer employee questions, uh, administer the uh, chat group. <clears throat> so that's another option for a learning experience platform. <clears throat> Excuse me for the cough, and a little dry throat here. Any other questions or comments? I think actually that last example ties in perfectly to this question we have. What do you think, what are your thoughts on the benefits or downsides to doing social learning via a learning platform like this where the user has to specially log into this versus something like Microsoft Chat or Slack that the company is already using all the time and they probably have open all the time? Well, they both have the, the valid places. What's nice about this is it, it's like a hybrid situation where you could integrate this. Like for example, in this course, we've got this, this week by week, they're learning content. So you're sort of like steering the discussion week by week as you introduce new content in the learning, in the learning path. Then it opens up a discussion on that particular week's content. I actually got my master's degree in instructional technology and design. And each week I had to read at least, I had to read other students' posts by and comment uh, on at least three other students' posts by Wednesday. And by Friday, I had to respond to comments that other students gave me. So it actually, I had a nice structure here to week by week to engage with the other students. Uh, things like Slack is, is kind of, is, is great. It's kind of impromptu anytime, you know, at, the, at a point of need. So that's kind of good too. But here you can integrate it very tightly with a learning path. And I hope that answered you know, the question. So there's, there's positions uh, for both. Great, thank you. I think that was a great answer. We do have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. The social learning piece, the comments and the chat that you just showed, can 
that be translated as well, or is it just content in the microlearning module that you were showing earlier? That's a good question. Right now, I believe it's not going to be translated. But that, you know, that is a good question. And if you want to know more, we can follow up with you offline afterwards about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, um, okay. Oh, I was just going to say those are all the questions we have right now. Okay. Let me show you something else about something else to look for in the platform. Every single platform is going to enable you to upload content and build courses. The typical sequence is this. I create a course. I upload my content into that course. And if I want to create another course, I repeat the process. I create my course, I give it a title, I upload my content, I set my, I set my setting, my description, my thumbnail, and I got, I got another course done. If I want to use the same video that I uploaded and I want to use it in another course, sometimes you have to upload the video again because you uploaded it in one course, now you have to upload another course. Sometimes you can say, well, since I've already uploaded it, let me go get the link to that video that's already uploaded and let me put that in my course. We got something that beats both of those, okay? You upload your content first. When you upload the content, it resides here in your content library. Then when you wanna create a course, add new, we'll give it a title. Webinar demo. I would type in my description right here. Uh, use this to enroll, publish it, update the course. So now I got a course, a course shell. Over here, here's the page that I built in this platform. So I'll just drag and drop that in here. Here I have a, a quiz. We'll drop that in here. And let's scroll down here. Here I have a discussion. I'll drop that in here. And actually, here is another one. Kind of like that one better. Chat with the professor. All right. And let's go to take a look at my PDFs. Let's drop a couple of PDFs in here for the training. And let's find a video. I'm filtering on videos. So I'll drop a video in here. So now I've created a learning path that says, look, the, the learner is going to look at this item and then this item and then this item and then, and then we'll, we'll drag the chat right into this position. So you see, how, and, and this, is a, this is actually a demo uh, answering the question the previous person had. So here I'm, in, I'm integrating the social sharing and the chat and the discussion group in a certain sequence. I want you to learn a certain amount about the subject before you engage in the, in the chat. Okay, and then you know, you're gonna continue learning a little more. I could drag and drop a game in here. So actually here, here's a game. We'll drop a game in here. Uh, actually, let's put the game after the quiz. So a certain amount of learning takes place. They take a quiz. You get to, you see the score on the quiz, and then as a little reward, they get to play a game. And obviously, it's, an, it's a learning game, so it's going to reinforce what they've already learned. And I click publish, and it is done. And everything that I dragged and dropped, I could create another group, another course, and that will work fine. If we take a look at these, you see some courses have a couple of items. Some have a lot of items, some have a few items. These are learner groups. So this one course from someone in the admin group, see it says ADMI, they're gonna see the first three items. They're not gonna see this chat, okay? And then they're gonna see, I see admin in the next group. If someone is in the tech group, they're gonna see these two items and that's it. So one course 
can actually look different to different types of employees, depending upon what their role, what their position is in the company, and you control. So you get, actually, this is a personalized learning pair. So I see we're coming up on the end of the hour. It's last call for questions. All right, we'll give everyone one more second, but I think that we have answered all of the questions. What I hope to it, that you've taken away from today is that the old terminology of LMS sort of like has fallen away. What people call an LMS, what people call an L LXP, they're these learning platforms, and each of them has their own bag of assets, their own bag of, of, of features. Some boast a lot, some boast fewer, some are powerful, some are weak. Uh, and I hope I've given you a couple different directions and perspectives on how to compare these, these different features from these different vendors and think about them in a couple of different ways. Uh, at the end here, I ho hopefully I showed you uh, some glimpses on how easy some of this stuff can be and how much difference, how the impact of your choice on learning platform uh, can make. And I hope you reach out, uh, download the e-learning you know, books, reach out to me for additional help. I've got nothing to sell you, but I do have a lot to talk to you about. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dominic. That was fantastic. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, this was recorded. So if you needed to dip out to answer a call or you missed the beginning, you will receive a link to that recording in your email that will probably come tomorrow. And the links to the eBooks, Dominic's meeting link, and our webpage about the Rockstar Learning Platform, that's all in the chat there for you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and taking the time out of your day for this webinar. We really enjoyed having you. And hopefully, we'll see you all on another webinar soon. Have a great rest of your day.